Hello everyone, welcome to today. We're gonna to be going over how to build a LinkedIn profile from start to finish. And I'll just kind of be showing you the process from start to finish, as well as like using my personal LinkedIn profile to be an example or a framework for your own LinkedIn profile. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and get started with that. I will actually start by making a mock um, LinkedIn profile. And from there, we'll go ahead and go from the process like end to end. So for anyone who doesn't have a LinkedIn profile already, this would be a really good way to kind of look at how to, you know, make your own LinkedIn profile. Creating a LinkedIn profile first and foremost, and then we'll go over my profile and, you know, things that you should have in your profile for optimization. Actually making a LinkedIn profile profile i'll also get a temporary email set up as well so i can just use that so temporary email because this, this is going to be a mark account it's not going to be really like an actual linkedin account because i'm going to delete it immediately i'm done with this profile so we'll do that and then just do this as well all right perfect cool so first thing we're going to do like i said is we're going to start with creating a linkedin profile so let's go ahead and create a new linkedin profile so i'm going to use this and then put in this password all right sign in actually this is a new profile so i'm gonna click join now all right so we'll go ahead and put in our mock email and then put in the fake password agree and join so first name so since this is a test account or like a mock account i'm just gonna put a fake name like lambert and last name is going to be jones and that's a totally random name that i just created off the top of my head all right, so they're gonna wanna do a security verification, make sure like you're not bot or whatever. What pay, what image is the correct way up this image? All right, perfect. That's gonna run a verification. United States postal code. That's not my actual postal code, but I do live in Dallas, Texas. Next, most recent job title. Let's assume that we are some sort of like intern. So we'll say we're an information technology intern. So information technology intern. Perfect. And this will be an internship. And then we'll just assume that we're working at General Electric and continue. So even if we're a student, I do recommend not choosing the student one so you can get like the full options for professionals. So you typically want to just click continue here. Okay. I don't know why that is broken, but oh, there we go. All right, then we have to confirm the email. So this is going to be a little weird. Right now, I'm just trying to confirm the email in a separate screen so that works fine two zero one all right perfect so i have that i have that confirmed in a different screen i'll put that in here okay cool so after you confirm your email go ahead and choose what whatever it is you're looking for right now so if you're looking for a new job or if you're considering a new opportunity whatever the case may be but let's say we're actively looking for a new job we want to get a cybersecurity internship or our first SOC analyst position we'll just say yes i'm actively looking for a new job and we'll click next and we'll put in the, the job title we're act actively seeking for which will be a cybersecurity analyst and Job locations, we'll just put in Dallas, Texas. And also put in that we're open to remote work. Click next. Let me spread this out a little bit more so that it fills up the screen. Perfect. So we will get notified for new job postings for cybersecurity analysts in Dallas, Texas. Um, that's really great if you're looking for new jobs. So that way you can get those job alerts in your emails and be able to apply through LinkedIn for those jobs. All right, perfect. So next stage is letting recruiters know that we're open to new jobs. So of course we want to want to do that because we are open to new jobs, right? As a hypothetical uh, person who is creating this new LinkedIn profile. All right. So if you are, you know, if you have your phone with you, you might you could scan this um, to get the app on your phone. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and click next, and it's going to put you know information about people we know. So it's going to be mostly people that work at the company that we said we're working at. And in this case, I am posing as a person who works at General Electric, which I don't. But this is just for a test account. So I'm just going to skip this for now, and we can uh, follow some specific pages or some specific people or like some specific courses or whatever the case may be. But we're not going to do that in this case so i'm just going to click next and then here we can see various job recommendations that we can follow or we can apply for but we're not done creating the actual profile yet so what we're going to do is actually go into this profile 
and then update it with some very very important information all right so up next is going to be what are we going to do this time so we're going to first of all put a picture right so of course if you're on linkedin definitely want to have a picture on there and i'm going to show you like the sort of sample picture that you, you would you know want to have as you can see the examples here are very clear single picture of yourself headshots very very clear picture of yourself you know you could have a smile professional clothing whatever the case may be so go ahead and i'll put a photo i'm gonna choose a photo from my desktop here so in this case i have this you know really old photo from like two years ago and it's you know fairly professional i'm not wearing a suit or anything but i'm wearing a shirt and a tie pretty basic very clear background clear face headshot right i actually took this headshot by myself so it was actually like a self-portrait very professional and you know very well portraying of my face and myself so that's about that save that photo and nice so we have the very first section of our linkedin profile all set next we want to update the remaining parts of our linkedin profile right so i'm gonna go ahead and go here and what is really nice about linkedin is it tells you like you know some things you need to add or to do to update or make sure your linkedin profile is up to date right so let's add our education one thing i really do like about adding your education is it gives you access to other people who have gone to the schools that you went to or you can also see people at other companies who work at who went to the schools that you went to right so let's say I, I went to wg for example when i'm looking at companies on linkedin i can see other people who are also wg students or alumni that work at that company so it's pretty cool to have that as well right and there's a sort of affinity that you know people typically have to students that go to their own school or students that actually graduated from their home school right so that could even really be a really good way to connect with other people on linkedin so we're going to just assume that you know lambert jones went to utsa uh, which is this queen san antonio and he's doing a, a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity. actually let me just do bachelor's bachelor's of science bachelor's of science in cybersecurity. all of this is just assumptions and you know we're the fake account and let's say this started in august that's typically start of like you know fall semester and august of 20 19 and then end date was like next year let's say next year so july of 2023 2023 there we go perfect so now that's going to be added to our profile as you can see here it's at the very top at the same same place at the company that we work same place as the company that we work at up next is going to be a summary of you know yourself so this is a really good place to really like give a really nice overview of yourself right it's like your elevator speech so if you know if you meet somebody on an elevator and you're like give me your 30 second elevator speech about yourself and why i should hire you this is kind of where you want to do that right so somewhere not between enough information and not too much information that kind of summarizes your experience so here i put something like man these are typically hard to craft off the top of your head but it will, be, it will go along uh, along the lines of something like security you know information information technology information technology engineer with experience experience designing Experience implementing, implementing IT systems and providing support for enterprise applications at scale. If you have more years of experience, you could be like information technology engineer with two years of experience implementing IT systems and providing support for enterprise applications at scale, like strong skill set or something like that in Active Directory implementation, uh, Active Directory implementation, network troubleshooting and endpoint security right this is just a really um, this is like a, a abstract right so it, this is just like an assumption for our uh, persona here that we're designing right this is not a real person but this is like some somewhat of what you could potentially put in there right and you could steal this if you want to no no intellectual property with that but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and save that and perfect so our profile is pretty you know very well set right so that's a very very nice overview from start to finish on how to create your first linkedin profile if you don't have one right so all the information is there definitely want to put some information about what you're doing at your internship right so this, this doesn't look bare but we'll go over that in a second but that's pretty much about it right uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually go ahead and uh delete this profile because all i wanted to do was just show you how to do that so settings and privacy and we'll go to accounts account preferences close account and then go i'm just gonna say i have a duplicate account next and password unsubscribe me done don't save perfect 
All right, so what I'm gonna do now is actually sign in to my personal LinkedIn account and then go over the entirety of my LinkedIn account and what you know you can take from that. So let's grab that and put that in here. Perfect. So this is my LinkedIn profile. Let me go into my actual LinkedIn profile. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna start from top to bottom, you know, about what your LinkedIn profile should look like. So first thing first is like a really nice header, right? So what we have here is a nice header, right? So it gives a really nice summary of you know what I do, who I am, right? So so like you know detection engineer i did a dog i'm also an aws community builder content creator and a cybersecurity tutor these are my handles right some people get really really fancy with it right i've seen some really nice fancy ones and you can actually design this with canva so that way you have a really really nice and well put together profile that immediately tells us what you're about right so there's that next is your title so people typically have you know their title here so detection engineer whatever it is you're doing and also some people like to add their certifications here so like you know security plus osdp CISSP. I typically recommend maybe at the maximum like two or three. More might be like a little excessive. Like I've seen like people with like a very long list of those things. I think just keeping it to like the top two or top three because there are like those top certifications that really matter that you have taken. So if you really do want to put them, just limit them to like the top two or three, right? That way it's like much neater. Next is if you have the creator profile set up, you also have the ability to put hashtags for your profile. That way people can find you using those hashtags right so i have those set up for my profile next is also for the creator profile you can also add your website and this links directly back to my youtube channel which shows that i'm currently live right now with 29 of you watching me all right so that's the first part of your linkedin profile the next part that is really important is the featured section so when you start posting things on linkedin uh, your certifications like what you're learning you know products you're building maybe like whatever it is you're doing right it's really really important to make sure you have some of those things featured on your linkedin profile as you can see here things i have featured here are like my most recent and most the achievements i'm most proud of most recently right which are my talks as well as like some projects i've worked on and you know certifications i've done in the past i've had like my previous certifications like you know the comp tier ones but over time i kind of evolved into just having it with my projects and my talks just being featured as you can see here my first talk is featured here for the one i did at texas cyber summit which was the accounting cost for detection engineering and if you've not seen that definitely go check that out on my linkedin i don't have a video for it but hopefully if i do another talk next year i will have a video for it but the slides are there so definitely check that out next is information about that talk next is also when i was doing a talk with the azure security hangout where i told about cloud detection engineering in azure um, i also have you know my oasp certification there i also have the time when i contributed to an open source project which is learn to cloud by gps and rishab and if you've not checked out learn to cloud definitely go check that out also if you've not checked out gps's channel on youtube definitely check that out as well i've contributed to the security portion of learn to cloud so definitely check that out because it has a ton of information about cloud security and how to get into cloud security so that is also highlighted and featured in my profile i also have the time when i got accepted as a community builder um, i also have you know my best friends charles azure cloud detection project which is which is one project i'm really really proud of and then also my cybersecurity home lab project which i'm continuously proud of so those major things are things that i highlight at the very top of my profile because those are the things that i really want to showcase that i've been able to achieve or i'm really proud of so put those things in your feature section in linkedin all of this activity stuff is going to be populated by linkedin automatically the next is your about section so if you remember from the initial profile we created it's a really nice short blob of your you know yourself your elevator pitch right which i mentioned earlier on and mine was previously longer than this so i had like three paragraphs but i have decided to condense it into one so that it just gives a really nice overview of my experience so it starts with a welcome to my linkedin profile right a little warm welcome right and then next goes over the fact that i'm currently a security engineer data dog where i research and develop various detections for cloud infrastructure and workloads my experience spans cloud threat detection cloud security engineering cloud threat hunting security research content creation cybersecurity education and public speaking passion i have for cybersecurity industry makes me enjoy what i do to the fullest and drives me to continue to grow become better at what i do and help others break into the field so i've essentially summarized my entire experience and everything that i do around cybersecurity i didn't have to mention that i'm a content creator i didn't have to i didn't have to mention that i'm a cybersecurity tutor i didn't have to
to mention that I have a cybersecurity channel or I have any of these things that I'm doing, right? I summarize that in my experience with content creation, cybersecurity education, and public speaking, but that experience is actually more eminent in my experience section in my LinkedIn profile, right? So I can actually go more into depth about those specific things in my LinkedIn profile. So right now I don't have any sort of description for what I'm doing at Datadog, and that is pretty deliberate, but probably later in the future, I would update that. Next, I'm also a cybersecurity tutor at Calling College. So here I've summarized essentially what I do as a cybersecurity tutor, right? Now, I don't people recommend having bullet points, which is totally fine, but I've found that if I have these things summarized into one or two sentences, it's much easier to read on other people's profiles. So I kind of adapted that to my profile as well. So essentially here, I'm saying um, I was the first tutor for the Flexstar program with responsibilities involving planning and designing tutoring program for IT networking and security fundamentals. The end goal of this program is to help students learn core skills and connect them with opportunities for IT and cybersecurity internships, right? Very, very nice and succinct, right? I could also have this in bullet points as well, but personally, I think this is a very, very nice summary of what I'm doing. I can go further into bullet points in my resume if I need to, right? I, I feel like a resume is a place to like, you know, go, go into bullet points and all of that stuff. But LinkedIn, give us a nice summary, in my opinion. Next, I'm a co-founder at Comsalib. So I'm essentially building an ed tech startup that is designed to make computer science easier, for the next generation of technologists. Very simple there. I'm also the founder of Cyber's Academy. You already know that. Cybersecurity content creation. Then my other experiences, right? So same thing here. I'm summarizing everything into, you know, two sentences, maybe two paragraphs, give or take. So for example, here, when I got promoted to becoming a threat analyst too, first thing I'm, I'm highlighting is the fact that I got promoted after four months to work, you know, for a Fortune 500 client. In my opinion, that's pretty major, right? So getting promoted after four months and also working for a Fortune 500 client, those are two major deals. So that's the main thing i want to highlight about this experience then after that i also want to just go over essentially what i did so previously i would have bulleted things like i did security investigations in splunk and i did you know security stuff in azure security center i was configuring firewall rules in cisco umbrella i was investigating host stuff in silence and CrowdStrike. but to be honest all of those things can be summarized into one single paragraph and you can then go further into these things on your resume so once again nice and succinct and giving us a really nice overview of what exactly you did in one or two sentences so during this period i was responsible for conducting threat hunts on both cloud azure and on-prem environments and also utilizing tools such as splunk azure security center cisco umbrella silence and CrowdStrike for security investigations host analysis and network analysis anyone who works in the security industry or is a, is a security recruiter whatever the case may be should be familiar with some of these tools and know what they're used for so i don't have to be like i use splunk to analyze logs i use CrowdStrike to analyze host activity right i could do that in my resume or i could talk about that later on people who work in the industry know what those things do so i don't have to specifically list those things out explicitly right except if i was like a subject matter expert where i was like designing like you know you know specific detections for edr or like architecting like the, the infrastructure that the edr is working on that's entirely different right so that's very well summarized and then next is my when i was a threat analyst one same thing here i was responsible for managed detection and response for a fortune 50 client and during this period i executed over 1000 security investigations right so a little bit of metrics here did host analysis and network analysis for both both cloud and on-prem environments by utilizing tools such as Splunk ES, which is Splunk Enterprise Security, Splunk Phantom at the time, which is a which was a SOAR. I think now it's now Splunk SOAR, CrowdStrike, Tanium, and all these cool things on here. And then when I was a security analyst, tier one here, same thing here, same thing here, right? So very nice as a scent, but in my resume, I can go further in depth at exactly what I did. And I can also exponentiate on these things when I, I'm actually answering questions in the interview. So when they ask me, uh, tell me about yourself or tell me about what you did in this role, right? Stuff like that. I can and go further into details about you know what exactly did i do working as a, a security intern for example at benefit mall right so i used to do a lot of phishing analysis like i used to analyze a ton of emails do static malware analysis on various like email attachments right to confirm if there were any indicators of compromise maybe on endpoints or any things that that could determine if email attachment was malicious or whatever the case may be right so i can go further into those things during the interview or in my resume but here i just want to have a really nice overview of what i did and hope that the recruiter you know reaches out to me so that I can give further context into that. So that's really it about experience. I would also say that my current experience might not be really be the best form. So as you can see here, I have like one, two, three, four, five things that I'm currently doing concurrently. So that might not really look very, very, that might be a little off-putting to a recruiter because it kind of looks kind of sus, right? I have five things going on at the same time. So, you know, to each their own, right? To be honest, I don't really care that much. If anything, maybe you want to limit this to like two or three, maybe to like you have other communities you're part of or moving things to the volunteer section, but none of these things I'm doing 
doing are actually volunteer, right? Like so I'm actually like actively working and building things out, right? I guess you could call content creation like volunteer work, but like I don't really think it's gonna volunteer work like to some extent, right? But to each their own once again. All right, education. So education is kind of, you know, interesting here because I didn't actually graduate from all of these schools. I went to, to both community colleges, but I didn't graduate from any of them. I only graduated from Western Governors University. But the thing about having these colleges on my profile means that other students or other alumni of this community colleges can also find me easily. I can also find them easily. So when I'm looking at job applications or when I'm looking at job postings or I'm looking at companies, I can see people who went to this school and, you know, be, you can see people who are students of, of this school or alumni of this school that work at that company, right? So for example, let me see if I can actually find, let's search for AWS, for example. Let me duplicate this page and I'll go ahead and search for AWS and we'll be able to see people who, you know, go to my school or went to my school that work at AWS, right? So let's go there and then let's see people and it immediately gives you information about people you may know. But I think there's something that also confirms people that actually went to schools that you went to. Let's see this person as a matter of fact maybe i might be connected to some people this person is connected to or okay we didn't go to the same school let me just do a different search for aws and wgu all right perfect so okay this might give us information about people who have aws certifications but for example here i think this is a good example right here so perfect so we both studied at western governors university by the way this is cisco soldier i've seen some of his videos on youtube definitely go to check out his videos he has some really good wg videos but what i was trying to point out was the fact that i can see when someone went to my school right and works at this company so and if you know anything about people who go to certain schools right there's a certain level of affinity you have to someone who went to your school or is going to your school right it's kind of like a like a brotherhood or a sisterhood or like a, a family right we tend to have a level a sort, a sort of affinity to people who have a sort of association to us right so if this person went to my school kind of more inclined to connect with them or have a conversation with them which could lead to further things like maybe your job referral so that's kind of why i have you know these schools listed so i never you never might know someone who works at dallas college or calling college might have an opportunity that might be very beneficial to me right or in your case other schools you might have been at and might have opportunities that might be very beneficial to you so i definitely leave them on there and you know i don't have dallas college and calling college on my resume because i didn't graduate from them however when i'm asking background checks I definitely put them in there but i only have the specific school that i graduated from in my resume someone asked what what's your degree from wgu it's the it degree just a simple it degree nothing extra on that front so next is my licenses and certifications so the thing about these are it pretty easy because linkedin automatically populates these from credly or badger so if you have a credly account and you have the certifications populated from comptia or, or aws or azure credly gives you the ability to automatically put these on your linkedin profile that way you don't have to you know transfer them or whatever and people can easily verify that certification from your linkedin profile so if you have any certifications you have on credly or badger make sure to export them to linkedin so that you know they can be easily verified by anyone who's looking at your profile so for example here you can go ahead and show this credential and you can see here this badge was issued to abyssala day spring johnson on august 31st 2022 by the way i'll be making a video about um, how i pass this <laughs> certification later on because this was a beast but as you can see it's validated that i passed the certification so that's really good to have next is the volunteering experience so i typically try to keep my volunteering experience to security stuff to be honest i don't have much non-security volunteering experience so that kind of makes sense but as you can see like it's cloud or cloud security related so i was a content contributor for cloud security podcast earlier on in the year i made one or two videos for them i don't remember specifically but i was a content contributor for them and i put that on there because it was you know volunteering by the way if you're not subscribed to cloud security podcast definitely check them out best cloud security podcast out there right now definitely check them out and then next i'm a member of the black and Cybersecurity community so actually pretty active in the community i was also a volunteer at defcon earlier in the year so like i consider myself a volunteer and an active member of the community also i'm an AWS community builder which is also a volunteer thing that i do as well so basically if you're familiar with the community builder program it's like you know people who do stuff for the AWS community like content and all those things and then finally last month i was a all builders welcome mentor for new builders for aws which is 
why AWS sponsored me to go to reInvent last month. So these are my various full intern experiences. I don't really have the information there. I should populate that, but it kind of gives you an overview of like things that I do outside of my main job, which is essentially the point of volunteering. I know some people actually put things that are non-security related or non-tech related or non or not related to what they do. I think that's fine, but I generally like to keep mine centered around security stuff. Next is your skills. So skills are definitely nice to have on here. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna actually go back and review some of these skills because I know earlier in my career, I put some of these things as fluff. And as a matter of fact, I think most of the stuff, most of the skills here are actually, actually true because I try as much as possible not to fluff about what I'm capable of. But the goal here is to actually put things that you're familiar with or technologies you've worked with. And you can also demonstrate these skills by taking skill assessments. That way, LinkedIn can actually validate that you understand these skills, you know, or how to use these tools, whatever the case may be. So these skills, all, I believe, also make it easy for recruiters to find you based on specific skill, skills or keywords they might be looking for people who they're looking to hire, whatever the case may be. Next is recommendations. So I currently only have one recommendation right now. I probably should maybe ask for more recommendations, but I think recommendations are good to have. I asked for a recommend recommendation from Hunre because um he is my mentor, but I've also worked with him in the past at Optiv. He was my senior, but he didn't he didn't directly manage me. But you know, Hunre has an interacted with me a lot and he definitely can speak to my skills my my capabilities so it's definitely someone that can give me a good recommendation if anyone wants to give me a recommendation while we're at it please feel free to i've also given some recommendations so i definitely give Hunry a recommendation as well as athena thomas a recommendation as well but these are kind of good to have right because if someone can speak to your skills and your ability which is pretty nice right so yeah next is publications so if you have things such as, such as publications on newspapers or articles or maybe even youtube YouTube, right this is definitely where you want to put that the only thing i have here was my uh, deep dive into wire shark course which I, I don't think is a publication but you know i don't necessarily have anything like a newspaper or anything like that hopefully sometime in the future right i hope so but i have a ton of like video publications which you know could categorize it that, as that but that would just like really make this space messy and i like to keep things really neat courses so this is also like i don't know how relevant this really is but i took you know i've taken some courses like i've taken the splunk fundamentals course i've taken the suck core skills course from black hills information security as well as the suck analyst level one i took all of these like last year or two years ago i was still working as a uh, security analyst so you know if you have some courses that you're pretty proud of or you want to showcase here definitely feel free to i have taken a lot of, of courses since then but i don't really care to have those up here i might actually even completely take out this section because i don't really see the relevance of it but whatever the case is you know you can have that on there projects i think this is actually a really really good section here you can highlight different projects you've worked on or you're working on whatever the case is so for example uh, one project that i worked on was the learn learn to cloud one right, where i contributed to this you know security fundamentals section i kind of give you an, an overview of what i did here so learn to cloud is essentially a guide with the goal of providing an outline of skills you need to learn to get into cloud computing and i personally contributed the security section actually i have to I have to fix that typo i said session so i contributed to the security section outlining various resources that can guide individuals looking to get into cloud security right so once again if you've not checked that out definitely check it out i will be doing a video about this soon as a matter of fact because i think it's a really really good resource that is slept on for cloud security next is my cybersecurity detection and monitoring lab project probably my most favorite project so far that i've done basically you know my homework project and yeah just an overview of what i did there and then this is the other project that worked done which was in 2020 i actually don't remember much about this data validation project because i was working working as a HP extern then for the summer it was a summer scholar program and we I worked with this group to design like a bot that automates like data validation and I honestly don't remember what we did to be honest it's like it's been such a, such a long time and even when we were doing the project I was so confused the whole time but you know I have that listed there I think the the link to the project is actually there yeah we had a whole powerpoint and everything right so yeah we <laughs> it was actually interesting the powerpoint is actually broken because there's a bunch of like pictures and stuff that don't work but yeah <laughs> it was a very very simple project so let's get back into it all right so finally or not finally honors and awards uh so you have like whatever awards you're proud of back in the day when i used to be a 4.0 gpa student shout out to colin college i got the president's list that was like fall semester was it fall spring semester of uh freshman year of college and i, haven't, I don't think i've ever had a 4.0 since then that was when i started working was it was it 20 2020 2020 yeah i think that was when i started working as an intern yeah after that I started working as an intern so like i was like yeah 
yeah, I don't care about Square anymore. <laughs> so I haven't had a 4.0 GPA <laughs> since then. And WGU doesn't have like a GPA ranking system because it's like competency based. Everybody has a 3.0 GPA, right? So, I mean, but who really cares, right? Like I've never had my GPA on my resume before, except when I was applying for an internship. So it is what it is, right? I just have it there. So, you know, let me shine while I shined. Um, next is my languages. So I am bilingual. I speak English and Yoruba, which is a Nigerian native language. So I am proficient at both languages. I can speak, read and write both languages. So I have that in there. And this interest just like random stuff to be honest but it kind of shows like some people or stuff that you're following and stuff like that from top to bottom that's kind of like an overview of like you know what your linkedin profile should look like in my opinion of course my profile is not the best example right so this is honestly not the like most professional picture i'm not gonna lie like i know this is not <laughs> this is not necessarily a professional picture but you know i like the picture so i have it on there i'll probably take a headshot later next year like this like a lot more professional but for the time being this is totally fine this is actually what a professional picture should look like right you know suit maybe a tie or whatever right shout out to ashish as well he's the co-host of the cloud security podcast so definitely check him out like i said really really great podcast but that's a end-to-end -end overview of getting your linkedin profile recommendations from creating a profile to what you should have in your profile to really optimize it for search and also like appropriateness as well as attractability to hiring managers and recruiters right so also another thing too is also if you're new to linkedin search for like people right search for like cybersecurity, for example right that way you can easily connect with people who work in cybersecurity, or if you have like a specific okay, people so if you have a specific role in mind like let's say like detection engineers like i want to connect with more detection engineers right so i'm just gonna go ahead and search for detection engineer and it should give me example okay it will show me jobs but if i go to people it should give me like examples of like various detection engineers you know that i'm either connected to or that are on linkedin right so it's a great way to really connect with people that you might be interested in and find people around your niche that you want to connect with and learn from so those are my recommendations for linkedin you know from building your profile to optimizing your profile for searchability and attractiveness to recruiters and hiring managers and i hope to see you guys soon in another video or another stream thank you for watching i'll see you next time